What's up everybody, we are here at LEGO Games in Denmark, ready to check out some LEGO games, but they also have a ton of bricks, figures, and sets, a pretty sweet museum, so let's check it out. <laughs> That's not the perfect pork face, I don't know what it is. What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo, and a few weeks back, I got to take one of the best trips of my entire life. One of the coolest, hands down. The LEGO group invited me to Billen, Denmark, LEGO headquarters in order for me to check out some of the new mobile titles that their new studio, LEGO Games, has been cooking up. But beyond the video game playing, I also got to experience an insane amount of behind the scenes, and you're already witnessing some of it in this video, and there is plenty more, because I was fully immersed in the world of LEGO. This town, I'm telling you, it felt like it was figuratively and at times literally built brick by brick. So we're going to start off with the games and then we're going to get into so much more because this was a trip of a lifetime. And in my 10 years of YouTubing, I don't think I've ever felt as behind the curtain as I was able to go on this trip. So big thanks to the LEGO group and big thanks to everyone that hosted me and was so kind, so gracious, and so willing to show me so much and how this incredible brand came to be. But as I mentioned, the main reason I was there was to play some games. LEGO was doing a lot of stuff on the mobile front. We're gonna talk Brawls, I saw Tower, I saw Legacy, and I'm super excited for Art House. I think it's really cool that they partnered with Apple Arcade for LEGO Brawls and eventually LEGO Art House. But Brawls was the focus of my time here. It's basically Smash Bros for LEGO in quick bite battles with a heavy emphasis on customization and you building your own little brick boy or brick girl. You get to customize almost everything, including the attacks and including the special power-ups you're able to find. It is a very chaotic brawler with surprisingly good controls. It's definitely family-focused, but you can get a lot more depth out of it if that's what you desire. You're throwing your team against the other team, attempting to capture a point while also crushing, not killing, crushing the other little brick people. It's really fun, visually very appealing, and it plays really great. Simple maps allow you to focus on the combat and traversal, the two key pillars of this game outside of customization, of course. And once you're in there, you're gonna be running around attempting to acquire all of these item blocks a la Mario Kart that spin and secure a specific power-up, again, based on your individual loadout. You'll then use these to fight against other LEGO peoples, maybe grab a dragon, perhaps a jetpack, something that helps you move, something that helps you shoot, something that just gets weird and wild like a hot dog stand you wear on your back. All the creativity and cleverness of the mainline LEGO games is present here, and it works out really well for this Smash Bros inspired fight fest. Now, of course, the game isn't anywhere near as complex as Super Smash Bros, and I do hope that they'll flesh things out with more multiplayer modes or even a single player component, because it is fun to take your character into this world. The more you play, the more you progress, the more you unlock. You gotta get some cool new pants, a crazy hat, or a new weapon upgrade for your character to take back into battle. It's very team focused, and this game is gonna be the most enjoyable when you're playing with a squad of players that you know but it's also okay if you don't really know them. I was playing alongside a bunch of people I'd never met before and was still able to have a fun and successful time. It's a testament to how well the game runs, how well the game plays, and that it's just cool to see these LEGO guys doing all sorts of crazy stuff on your phone or iPad. 
LEGO Brawls is an Apple Arcade exclusive, and that service has blown me away. I haven't talked about it much on the channel, but for $5 a month, the fact that you get access to so many games, and so many games of quality, it's secretly one of the best deals going on. That and Game Pass are really rocking the traditional payment method in the gaming space. I mean, I recommend Apple Arcade for all the games out there, but if you do have it, you gotta check out LEGO Brawls. I also got to see LEGO Tower, which as you might have guessed, is a lot like Tiny Tower and LEGO Legacy Heroes Unbox, which is a team-based RPG battler bringing in familiar faces from your favorite LEGO sets. But the LEGO game I'm most excited for isn't out yet. It's coming to Apple Arcade, and it's called LEGO Art House. There's not a lot out there about this title, but it looks so intriguing. It's got a super unique abstract art style, and it's actually targeted towards adults. It's taking a distinctively different turn for a LEGO video game and exploring what happens when play is removed from your life. They posit that we only get old because we stop playing, and this game is all about the value of creativity, a narrative-based journey, Apple Arcade, abstract Legos. It sounds fascinating to me, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I hope it comes out soon. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can check out Lego Brawls for yourself. You definitely should do that. But this only encapsulates the first few hours of my trip. And I was there for days. Now, I'm only gonna give you guys the highlights. If you wanna hear the full story, maybe I can do a very long form podcasty type video. Just let me know in the comments down below. But the main thing I walked away with was just how much impact Lego actually has across the globe. I'm a big Disney fan. I have been my whole life. I think it's a touchstone that a lot of us, especially in my generation or even the next generation or the generation before mine can all relate to because we grew up watching the movies, dreaming of going to the parks, having the stuffed animals, the toys. Now with Marvel and Star Wars and ESPN, Disney kind of just owns entertainment. And when you go to the park, you have that magic moment. And I, I grew up with Legos, but I don't think I ever associated that magic moment with them. But after witnessing just how the brand was built and how much thought, effort, care, and whimsy has gone into the company from the get-go, it's clear to me that LEGO is on the same level as Disney in terms of what their goals have always been and in terms of how successful they are at bringing happiness, creativity, and joy to those who experience LEGO. And just about everybody has. When you really think of it, LEGO is kind of universal. Whether you owned a bunch of sets for yourself or saw them at school, a friend's house, pretty much everybody around my age has experienced LEGO. I'm sure you have. And so it was so cool to go and see their vault. I got to see every set ever. And even as someone who isn't obsessed with LEGO by any stretch, it's just remarkable to witness that kind of history, to know that they have been working tirelessly to build, to improve, to, to make kids smile for so long, so many years. I didn't realize just how far back LEGO goes. I mean, the Legoland Park that's there in Bill and Denmark was built in the 60s, shortly after Disneyland. In my head, it must have been built in the 80s or 90s, much more recently, but no, LEGO has been around for a long time. And Billund was a super fascinating place. It's a couple thousand people, I think 6,000 or so, and most of them are there because of LEGO. I mean, they've got LEGO factories, they've got a LEGO museum, they've got the game studio, we even got to eat at a LEGO restaurant, and you got to build your meal with LEGO bricks. You show up and the menu has food items, and each one is associated to a specific brick. This is like so freaking cool, it blew me away. It's the kind of attention to detail, focus and immersion that Disney does, and that's why I'll continue to make comparisons between LEGO and Disney, because in my eyes, they're both striving for the same thing. So you got a little bag of bricks and you got the menu and maybe the long yellow brick was chicken and maybe the short green brick was salad and they had all different options and varieties and then you built on this little cartridge your meal with bricks inserted into a machine. A little digital Lego person concocted your meal and sent it off to the chefs. I think they were real people. I, I guess they could have been Lego chefs. And then actual brick boxes came down conveyor belts like your meal is in a brick box down a conveyor belt and a lego animatronic hands you your meal and you take it back to your table it was just remarkable again so much whimsy and so much joy and even at the ripe age of almost 30 i still just get so many pangs of happiness when i see this being put out into the world 
and it oozes from Lego. At the museum, we got to see these incredible creations, these very creative builds. Obviously, the sets are awesome and, and very well designed, but it's almost more impressive to see people take Lego and express themselves. Giant dinosaurs, entire villages, humongous sculptures that apparently took so many bricks and so much time. But it's remarkable and fun to witness. And they had all sorts of games and activities and people spent their day there. It's like a fun attraction. And when you walk out, they gave you a specific combo of bricks, a specific build of six bricks that is exactly your own. There's millions and millions of combinations of what you can do with six bricks. And they're still cycling through based on the people that attend. So I walked out with my own special brick combo. Nobody else in the world has that exact build that has visited Lego House, their museum slash play place. So like, a lot like an interactive science museum or something, but exclusively Lego and so freaking cool. We got to learn a lot of the history of Lego as well and how they started off small building children's toys and eventually working their way to the connectable bricks and into the powerhouse they are now working with all the major IPs like Disney. Ironically, I mean, they have a freaking Disney castle Lego set, which I did also get to see there. It's incredibly expensive. I wanted to take it home, but a little out of my price range right now. Anyhow, they've always had an insane focus on detail and quality. There's this really cool story where the creator of Lego, his son found a way to kind of expedite a process of, of how they would paint these ducks before bricks were their focus. And, and he was so proud and so happy. And they said, no, we're going to do it the right way. Cutting corners is not the way to success, and it's definitely not the way to the customer's heart. And we want to make sure that quality and customer experience is at the forefront of everything we do. And that really set the ground rules for the company going forward. And it's evident today because there's a reason Lego bricks are the top tier. How many wannabe bricks are out there? Plenty. But when you see a brick, you don't think of a brick, you don't think of a connectable toy, you think of Lego. And the reason is because they have been committed to excellence from the very start. Oh, one of my favorite rooms, I forgot to even say this, Lego House had a room where they had every single Star Wars minifigure ever made, all lined up. We're talking every character, every variant, every colorway. It was in the hundreds. There were so many. Little R2-D2, little Watto, little Anakin, little Kylo, little Rey, little Boba Fett. Such a cool sight and a collection that even as not a massive Star Wars or massive Lego fan, I was instantly envious of because it just looks so cool in that quantity and how specially they had it set up. Just a really nice magic moment. Then after so much nostalgia and reverence for the past, we got to look to the present and even the future because the Lego factory is focused on the future for sure. They've got robots that are moving the bricks around. They've got robots and machines that are making the bricks in mass quantities. It was really impressive to see how it's all done and to know there are so many different kinds of bricks. It's not just the one by three and the two by four. There are tons and tons of different bricks they have to make in different colors, different assortments. And to see them come off the assembly line or the assembly machine or whatever technical term you'd use and be put in their little packages and then carried off by robots and put into crates and shifted around the site on upstairs conveyor belts, it was all automated. I mean, there's obviously humans there, but so much of it was automated and it was so cool to see that being done. You know, they're making wheels and they're making flowers and they're making normal bricks and odd bricks and bricks that I'm sure are going to go to a pirate ship or a knight's castle or a freaking Frozen 2 Olaf set. It was just really interesting to see and be a part of and be allowed to go where hardly anyone else has gotten to go. Last but certainly not least, we got to go to the original Legoland. And in my head, this park opened a couple decades ago and shared almost everything with the parks I've seen in San Diego and in Florida, the Legolands that we have over here. But in fact, the original Legoland opened far, far longer ago. If you're a fan of Disney history, you may remember that Disneyland opened in 1955 and Legoland Billund actually opened in 1968. So only 13 years after Walt wowed the world, Lego was doing their own theme park. And it's heavily reflected in the place itself because it's a very old school theme park yet still has cool animatronics and so much lego charm it's very kid focused but raven and i still had a ton of fun there we even got to ride a ride that completely shocked us because it was a drop track coaster i had no idea i assumed it would be ultra kid friendly it had a little drop going decently fast and then we pause in a room 
hit the brakes and all of a sudden these little Lego people come up on the screen, they're picking at the ice, and before you know it, the entire track and coaster was dropping like 15 feet, which blew me away because I'd never been on a drop track coaster, and so many of the rides were so old school, I didn't expect something so modern. So it's a nice mixture there, but it has that, if you've ever been to Disneyland in Anaheim, it has that like charm of yesteryear where you can just kind of smell like this place was so magical when it first opened. And it's quaint and it's dainty and you can just tell that the kids who first set foot on the paths were just blown away. Their minds were opened. I mean, Lego is always trying to open minds with creativity and unique imaginative play. And that kind of came through at Legoland as well. There are many more stories and so much detail I could go into about everything we saw, but I'll leave you with one last little anecdote. Every person we met that worked, whether at the Lego house, Lego games, Legoland, they were all so genuinely nice and happy. And it made me think about my life and my passion and my purpose. And I just really respect that that company is over there trying to make a difference in the world and trying to bring joy, positivity, creativity to children and to adults alike. It is a very awesome mission statement. It's a very awesome purpose. And I really respect that they've chosen people that share that philosophy and that are able to really exude that mentality. It definitely made a difference for me the entire trip and almost made me want to go live in Billen, this magic happy Lego world built brick by brick. But that'll do it for the video, guys and girls. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed your tour of Billen, Denmark and everything Lego with your captain speaking ghost robo. Big thanks to Lego as well for making such a memorable moment for me and sharing their world uh, with all of us. It really was so special. So if you have a chance, maybe dive a little deeper into Lego and see how much lore and history there really is. Check out Lego Brawls. I'll put the link in the description down below. And if you want to hear more about the trip, let me know in the comments as well. Until that time, everybody, thanks again for watching. Have a fantastic freaking day. Drink some hot chocolate, make somebody smile, and we'll see you all later.